Welcome to Coffee and Conversation for ESL Listening. I'm Danielle. And I'm Christina. So grab a cup and join the conversation. Hey, so wow, it is so great to see you. It has been seriously a long time. Yes, it has. And, you know, it's con- it's nice to see you too. Last time I saw you, I, you were actually in person here and... But it's I know. nice to see you even on the screen. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, we, uh, we've had a lot of things going on in our lives since I was in Illinois. Um, yeah. A lot of places we had to go. We, I think we all got sick and, <laughs> you know, yeah. so yeah, one thing after another, but we are finally back together. So I'm very happy to get started again. Yes. And... Um, we're going to get started today, uh, because it is October and we're starting spooky season. I love (laughs) Halloween. So I had to suggest that we do a Halloween theme, um, discussion today. So I hope you're okay with that. I hope everyone out there is okay with that, but, uh, hopefully we'll find something interesting, even if you don't love scary stuff. So what about you? You know, I, 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 well, I do like Halloween and, you know, it's not, and I think Halloween is a holiday where it's not just the scary stuff. There is also, you know, like a family, kids, I mean, there's also a lot of nice and cute and sweet stuff that's going with that, that comes with this holiday. Yeah. And the thing is actually, you can make it however you like, you know, you can make of it what you want. If you like spooky and scary, um, yeah, for sure. There's lots of things you can do. And then there's just fun, cute things, um, family things, like you said, games, activities. So yeah, for, if you like scary stuff, great. If you don't, there's always something for everybody for Halloween. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And And I think my birthday is close to Halloween and I've always loved Mm -hmm. that. Um, I always thought, (laughs) That was so cool that my birthday was near Halloween and it just suits me. So, well, and I remember you telling me that Halloween it was your favorite holiday out of all. Yes. So, and it's one of I love right, right. And it's one of the most popular holidays here in the United States. Uh, I, I think feel so. Like. And yeah, probably partially is because it is one of those commercial holidays, as they call it, which means stores right. can sell a lot of either candy or decoration um, with the costumes that people have to dress up. And so I think it it is quite popular here. For sure. Now, you know, I've talked to people from all over the world and I always ask about this when October rolls around. Hey, you know, do you celebrate Halloween there? And if you do, like how big of a holiday is it? And I've noticed over the years, like when I first started this and started asking People were like, yeah, it's not really a thing. And it feels like over the years, it's gotten to be a little bit bigger of a thing. How would you say it is in your experience, like uh, um, in Ukraine, any changes in the interest in it? So it it is very similar to what you just described. Um, growing up, we, we didn't really celebrate Halloween um, because right. it's not one of the cultural holidays. Um even though it was originated in Europe, but um, it was not really celebrated. But then as I was, you know, getting older, I noticed that like some schools or some places would start just dressing up part. Um, And then now I see more and more, there's more, you know, information about Halloween in Ukraine and all that. But I am not sure that they're still celebrating it to the um, you know, the the point that they do here. Like, I don't yeah. think they do trick-or-treating there. Oh, Dressing so up, fun. maybe, <laughs> decorating, right, but not necessarily trick-or-treating. Yeah. But that's something that I always enjoyed here, watching yes. kids go from house to house. I, I have a funny story about it, actually. Oh, okay. Um, so when my husband and I bought our first house, cause we used to live in an apartment and then we bought a house and my husband loves Halloween and he was so excited that we finally had a house and we're going to have trick-or-treaters because in the past we would go either 
for Halloween to his mom's house and help give out candy where we would celebrate it with our friends and go to their house. So the very first Halloween, I remember he was at home and we bought tons of candy. And um, I was still where I was working nights. So I was teaching at that time I was teaching English. Oh, yeah. Um, right. Like a language, right. And it happened to be the, the Halloween night was one of the classes. So I had to go teach. Well, I remember coming home that night and my husband was just upset. And I was like, what happened? I mean, Halloween, did you have trick-or-treaters? He goes, I know. (laughs) We had two people stop by. He's like, I'm so sad that I ate half a bag of Kit Kats myself. (laughs) (laughs) He was heartbroken. He had to console himself. No, candy. <laughs> it's so like, funny. What's the point of buying a house if you can't have trick or treaters? But I guess the street that, that we used to live on just wasn't really popular for trick or treaters. It was kind of older people living there, maybe, or no families. And so- yeah, it was kind of a busier street. And I think there were only houses on one side. You had like a big park or something yeah, on the other side of the street. Well, and yeah. we thought because there was park and school nearby, we would right. have more people, but it wasn't really. Um, now, in the house we're in right now, we get a lot of trick-or-treaters, which is nice. Oh, okay, it's, that's it's good. Fun. So he's it's, happy it's now. So much, yeah, it's so much fun to just sit there and watch them in the little costumes. and Yeah, some, sometimes they have such cute costumes. They're so creative. And that's the thing, you know, it's, they'll come in with a costume, either like a dinosaur and look really super cute or sometimes they'll have witchy something like you know like a vampire <laughs> yeah so i mean it's just really cool to see the kids express themselves um you know according to their personality it's a lot of fun right right yeah right well, so before I get too far into talking about Halloween um i did want to talk about a couple of vocabulary words um it's not something we we normally do in our in our show, but I think it's uh, it's not a bad idea, especially for this topic. Um, so one thing we're going to talk about a lot is you know things being scary, but we also have other words that we use um, to kind of mean scary, but has a little bit of a different meaning, like spooky, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. You'll hear things. I think I said it earlier. I said you know spooky season or something like that. Yeah. 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 And it kind of has the idea of like something is not like really scary. There's nothing really, um, you know, dangerous happening, but it's a feeling you get of like, ooh, something, something's Spooky. weird. Something, ooh, yeah, maybe a little ghostly or something. <laughs> right. right. Um, we can talk about spooky movies, right? So maybe it's not like yeah. super scary, but it's kind of like, ooh, right? Or spooky music, right? Mm, Sometimes we have spooky yes. music that has that kind of like gives you that kind of feeling, an like, easy mm. feeling, kind of. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Music. Um, yeah, spooky old house, right? There may not actually be anything scary about it, but there's just something that you kind of like, ooh, a little bit nervous, a little bit, yeah. A little bit strange. Or sometimes, you know, if there's a house that nobody lives in, it's just yeah. kind of sitting empty. Usually people say it's kind of spooky. Right. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to go in or no. Yeah. Um, and then we have another word, um, creepy. And I love this word because we mm-hmm. can use it for so many things. And again, it's like kind of scary, kind of strange, but in a way that makes you feel nervous or like maybe you know like when you get that little tingle down your back you're like ooh, right <laughs> yeah, yeah nobody can get my visual but you get the idea <laughs> and we use this word for like when we see like a person that gives us a really bad vibe right and we're like oh, he's really mean yeah. like makes me feel like maybe there's some danger but I don't really know I just I just want to stay away from it right yeah yeah that's true yeah. Um, so you could have a creepy old house too, like something that you're just like, oh, that something looks not good there. Mm-hmm. Or eerie, E-E-R-I-E. Um, this one has, I think, an element of something mysterious to it. Mm-hmm. Like maybe there's a secret in there, an eerie house, an eerie noise, 
right? Yeah. Like I heard something. What was it? That's sounds mysterious, right? That's a good. That's um, a really good way to describe that word. Yeah, I mean, because there's so much similarity in a lot of these words, but you'll see um, when you when you hear people use them, there's a different feeling that you get with each one. So, right. yeah, we also use the word eerie for something that is a really a, a weird coincidence that you can't explain, like an eerie like coincidence. Like, wow. <laughs> it's yeah, like it's something unexplainable. So weird. Yes. What? Yeah. Then it makes you kind of go, ooh, again. <laughs> My famous, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, a couple more words here we're going to talk about, and then we'll move on. Um, haunted is another word we talk about. Haunted houses. Okay. So yes. something that is inhabited by or visited by ghosts, you know. Or yeah, like ghosts or spirits or spirits, some supernatural. You know, creepy, creepy, yeah. Yeah. Figures, <laughs> ghouls. There's a lot of words like that too for supernatural things. We won't get into all of those either. Um right. so yeah, um haunted houses can be so called quote unquote real, like you really think there's a ghost in there. Or there's an attraction that they set up with scary stuff that, you know, is to try to make you scare and jump out at you and, you know, things like that. Um, and the last word I wanted to talk about was goosebumps. This is a nice word for when you're, yeah. Oh, I like the the sound effect there. <laughs> so when you, well, when you feel a little scared. Yeah, yeah. You feel a little scared, something's creepy, something's eerie, something spooky, and you feel little bumps going up on your skin with like a little shiver. <laughs> you can get goosebumps when you're cold or when you're scared or excited or nervous about something. Yeah. And just a little aside, um, I believe in the UK, they don't use goosebumps. I think they say goose flesh or goose pimples. Yes, I was just gonna say that. Okay. Different, yeah. There's a different name for it. Then they don't say goose bumps, but I think it's goose, yeah. goose flash or goose pimple. You're right. Yeah, goose flesh, uh, flesh. flesh. Goose flesh sounds familiar to me. Yeah. Which is yeah, it would make sense. I mean, bumps or because it is on your skin and like yeah. When sometimes they say that the the hair st stands up, like when you feel yes. danger or something, your hair stands up. And that's because it much does, like yeah, person. right? Yeah, you, you feel it literally, like ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It makes your hair stand up. Yeah, yeah. That's another good one. Um, yeah. So th those are just a few interesting words I thought we might talk about. Um, so where did the idea of Halloween come from, anyway? Um, I know it's really um, popular here, but I don't think it started here. Well, it all came, I think, from um, Celtic culture, like in Ireland. Um, and it has to do with All Souls Day. So uh, there was a belief that on the certain night, and I don't think it was October 30th because of the calendar change and all that, but yeah, there that's was a true. night um, for All Souls where um, they believed, because it was still Druids, um, you know, that the, the religion or the whatever they believed at that time that all souls came out from the grave to kind of roam around the earth and all that. And I think um, the jack-o'-lantern is what was used at that time to ward off the evil spirits, right? They would have these uh, light up pumpkins, carved pumpkins, I don't think they necessarily had little faces and stuff like they do right, now. But, probably not. Um, <laughs> Things change kind of like the way. <laughs> right. But I think the reason people dressed up in like these scary costumes, like witches and all that, so um, like the spirits that would roam around the world would think that they're one of them and wouldn't kind of touch them, wouldn't bother them. Yeah, they'd get so a little that was the whole dress or something. Yeah. 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 So, and it's kind of, um, you know, kind of grew into the whole holiday. But, you know, the whole idea of, um, I read recently, the, the giving out candy, that, or like, you know, giving out things, people going trick-or-treating, that actually started all the way in medieval times. 
So oh. there was a tradition where kids or people would go from house to house to get treats and stuff. However, um, I just read that the actual tradition in the United States to give out candy didn't start until 1950s. I saw that too. I didn't realize it was before that recent. That, right, which is surprising. Yeah. Um, before that, people would give out like pieces of cake or cookies or fruits or nuts um, oh. like other treats, but not necessarily candy. And I think now it's exclusively candy that yeah. they give out. If, if you don't get candy, you're in trouble. Yeah. You know, and actually I think this is a good point to to uh, mention something that I kind of forgot about is this whole idea of trick or treat. You know, you hear that all the time. Kids knock on the door, or ring the doorbell or something, and they say trick or treat. They say it real fast. So it's trick or treat, but it's trick or treat. And the idea is Give me a treat. I'm giving I'm giving the owner of the house an option. Either give me a treat, which is, you know, a small thing that tastes good that you don't get all the time, which would be like candy. And if you don't do that, then the next option is I'm going to play a trick on you and I'm going to do some kind of act of mischief, maybe toilet paper the house, <laughs> throw a roll. No, I guess you don't do it at the house. I guess you do it to the trees. Yeah. You put the toilet paper in the trees or maybe egg the house. Like you throw an egg. Oops. But in reality, that's not really what happens. It's just something you say. Um, mm -hmm. But you want the treat. The kids come into the door. It's not really an option. It's give me candy. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's just, and everybody's prepared to give candy. Yes. Like nobody wants to. <laughs> Well, yeah. And if you're yeah. not, it, you know, it's not a you know requirement to participate in this. If you don't want to do it, most neighborhoods have a thing now that you either turn off your porch light, um, mm -hmm. you know, close your shades or something and just don't answer the door. No big deal. But if right. you do answer the door, it's understood that you've got some candy. You're going to have candy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, you know, going back to the tradition, the reason you notice that the Halloween is probably most popular in the United States. I know it's I know it's still popular in Ireland and um but I think United States it celebrates Halloween the most. I think but so. The reason that happened is because during the potato famine and all that when the Irish people were coming here in 1800s they brought this here and they, that's they true, just kind yeah. of kept spreading and spreading and that's how it became so popular. Yeah. Um, so candy, right? Um, do you know what is the most popular Halloween candy? Oh boy. Um, I don't know. Um uh, uh Halloween most popular Halloween candy. Like that people yeah. give or that people want, or is there a difference? Um the the, the most given. The most Usually. given. It's got to be something a little yeah. bit on the cheap side. So, no, it's not. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, Snickers bars. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, Not quite. A bit, well, and I think Snickers bars maybe because now, you know, people are more conscious of not allergies. So oh. they're not as popular. Oh, However, yeah. Reese's Cups are the number two. And oh, that's peanut butter. I should have said that because that's my favorite. <laughs> that's number two. Number one is Skittles. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Apparently, according to um, um, I'm not a fan the of this idea. Research that was done in 2020, Skittles was hmm. the most popular. Then Reese's Cups was the second, and then Starburst was the third. Oh, oh yeah. Know. Know. You know, I love Halloween so much that I don't like to cheap out when I'm giving out candy to the trick-or-treaters. I buy the best candy. And yeah, and I and I give like more than one piece. I give them several pieces of candy and it's always going to be candy bars. I don't like to give the cheap stuff just because I want people to be like, oh, it's great. You know, it's the best house in the world. I know. <laughs> yeah. But then you don't want them to keep coming back. So you don't want it to be too good. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's what's I've been trying to tell my husband that because we we do full size candy bar, like a you know full size Snickers or full size. Excuse me, full size candy oh, bars. Yeah. <gasps> oh yeah, 
Wow, need to go to your... Okay, everybody, we know what house to go to for trick-or-treating. <laughs> so, yeah, he's kind of in the same mindset as you. I was like, you know, you got to be the best house for the candy here, you know. We think the same so, about Halloween. So, you know, we're on the, we're on the oh, same yes. page here. Yeah. But you know what the actually least favorite candy for the Halloween? And it's something which is surprising because it's something that is kind of rhymes with Halloween. If you think about Halloween, you think about this type of candy, but not many people Uh, actually like it. I think it's got to be candy corn. Yes. Yeah. Even though it's like a very traditional, right? When you think about Halloween, you think candy corn. Right. Iconic. That's a good word. That's the one I was looking for. (laughs) Um, So, but they say it's the least, one of the least favorite candy um, out there. And you know what it used to be called, actually, before they named it candy corn? I think I might have heard this. Something like harvest something. Chicken feed. Chicken feed. Oh, my god! Chicken feed used to be the original name for candy corn. I I guess if it was called chicken feed, you know, that would kind of maybe dampen or sour the, uh, you know, the, you know, maybe not like it so much, but candy corn. I don't know. I think I like it. I don't know. I'm surprised that a lot of people don't like it, but I have heard that, but actually, you know, I like a lot of candies that people traditionally hate. So I like candy corn. I also like, there are these little things. I know you get, you're already making, getting ready to make fun of me. I know, but there are these I do candies. Not like candy corn. <laughs> you don't like candy corn? I do not like candy corn. Oh my God. It's good. I, you know, I feel like I might as well just take a spoonful of sugar and shove it in my mouth. Well, yes, yeah, you know, like. in limited quantities. Yes. I don't want to eat a whole bag full of it, but a couple bites of it. Sure. A couple years ago, there was a, a local, well, there's still a local, um, ice cream place here. They make their own homemade ice cream and everything. And a couple years ago, they had around Halloween time, candy corn flavored ice cream. And it sounded like it was going to be too much. So I thought, well, let me just have a sample of it first before I actually, mm-hmm. you know, jump in with both feet and get a, <laughs> a whole cone. Right. And it was so right. good. It was really? just the right amount of candy corn in there, like corn just to it. give you the flavor of it, but it wasn't overwhelming and, you know, cloyingly oh, interesting. sweet. Interesting. But yes, I mm. like candy corn. I also like these things. They're called peanut butter kisses. And they're, you'll know what I mean. They're wrapped in wax paper. It's either orange or black wax paper. And it's this chewy peanut butter candy. You don't know what I'm talking about? <gasps> oh, no. man. Oh, wow. It's called peanut butter kisses. I will have it, to try it, it out. I think they're called peanut butter kisses or something like that. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> most people I know hate them. I like them. Again, in moderation. I don't want a lot of them. Um, right. Another one, black licorice. People hate it. I like it. Yeah, I don't mind black licorice, but um, like in moderation too. Yeah, all this stuff in moderation for sure. Yeah, and then yeah. the last one that people hate that I like is called circus peanuts. Oh yeah, you know what those are? Yeah, again in moderation. I'll have like one. Yeah, they're, and that's it. yeah they're just too sweet for my taste. Yeah, very, and I didn't very realize, sweet. but it's a banana flavor. I mean, I don't understand yeah. why it's banana and it's a peanut and it's orange okay makes no sense and it's circus <laughs> peanut it's circus like, peanut I, I don't know somebody was i don't know having no, some hallucinations or something when they came up with that idea but yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's a lot about candy yeah i mean it's the season for candy yes it um, is what do you usually do for halloween you do any special things or um not anymore uh, you know years ago I used to have a halloween party every year and that was a big deal for me i mean i loved it um we had a a coffin that we had built and painted black i mean it was just a box with hinges and we just made it look like a coffin and we had some dry ice and so there was smoke coming from it Oh my god! Um, playing uh, movies in the background, 
um, decorate with cobwebs. Spider webs is another word for that. Sometimes we say cobwebs. Um, and yeah. spiders and bats. And I would dress up as something really good. Oh, you know, I want to say this before I forget again. Yeah. So when we talk about for Halloween, you put on a costume, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but we always say for this particular thing, for costumes, we say the phrasal verb to dress up, to dress mm-hmm. up as right. something. And that's um, to be contrasted with the idea of dressing up like in a formal way, like you dress up for um, a wedding or you dress up for some formal party or something like that. But when you're talking right. about Halloween, we say dress up and that always means to wear a costume. So I just want to make sure that's clear with everybody. So, yeah, I used to dress up right. as something – creepy or scary every year sometimes a character from a movie yeah i remember my favorite costume you ever dressed up in was lucy (laughs) from i I love Love lucy Lucy. yeah (laughs) yes it's pretty awesome because we used to have halloween parties when we got together and we would dress up and have a little potluck and treats and all that with students. That was so much fun. I miss it. was I miss a lot those. of fun, yeah. And, you know, this is a good uh, segue here and to talk about what people do for Halloween parties. And right. I remember um, some things that we used to do for Halloween parties. And they're typically very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, you have some music, especially some kind of a monster or creepy theme or something some of them like yeah not really scary but like funny monster songs Mm -hmm. um games right yeah games um i notice also um a lot of times like kids get together and they also have like halloween games um you know a lot of it it became a little more popular recently the trunk or treat have you heard of that yes yeah. Um, a lot of like schools do that now where you just on the parking lot, you kind of park your car around the perimeter of the parking lot and you open your trunk and you can put candy in your trunk and you can decorate it whatever way you want. And then kids go from car to car and get candy. So that's kind of becoming more and more popular thing to do. Yeah. Um, but you remember, I mean, like even in old times, sometimes when you watch it in movies or like a history about Halloween, there's this, um, what is it called? Apple bobbing? Is that what it's I called? I was just going to talk about that, bobbing for apples. And yeah. you know what? This is something that I've never been a fan of because it just feels unsanitary. But for sure, after COVID, is anybody doing this? I hope not. Are they still doing yeah. it? I okay, don't why don't you explain so. what bobbing for apples is for people who don't know? Well, usually they, f- yeah, they fill like a big tub with water and they put a bunch of apples in there. And you have a lot of the times, don't you have like your hands kind of in the back so you can't touch anything? Mm-hmm. And then yep. you have to um, kind of dip your face in the water and catch the apple with your mouth. Yeah, with your um, teeth, especially. Like you can, yeah. yeah, with your teeth, right, <laughs> bite into it. So, uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that game, but mm-hmm. people like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really had hoped that that would go away after COVID, but I don't know. Oh, but you know what we used to do? I remember this was fun. Um, we had contests where people would bring toilet paper and wrap people and make a mummy out of them. Remember that? Yes. Yes. I that do was remember fun. that. That was fun. Um, do you remember also we would make all sorts of Halloween treats? I still remember those fingers you made, like a finger cookies. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing I wanted to talk about. That The one thing that people love to do is to make little treats that look creepy. And finger cookies, like it looks like a witch's finger. Um, something with eyeballs. That's a big you, one. Yeah. We made like a spider cookies too that looked like I had a spider web and a spider on it. But uh, do you yeah. remember we made this punch, right? Like a yes. kind of like a juice, um, which is and which is brew. You're, I remember you froze um, 
there was like an ice hand in it, like you froze oh, water in the that. glove, and then you can you you pour water in like a I don't know rubber glove, and you freeze it, then you peel it off, and you put yeah. hands in that punch and then you can put like frozen eyeballs in there and all that it was so cool well i also had a mold (laughs) for a brain i should have put that in there i don't know why i didn't but i would make jello molds out of that yeah like all sorts of like disgusting looking things Mm -hmm. (laughs) but they're actually delicious yeah Yeah. one of my favorite things to make was a cake uh it's called ghost in the graveyard Graveyard. or something like that right remember that and you put like a crushed up Oreo cookies to look like dirt. And then these little certain kind of cookies that you write RIP for rest in peace rest and in, yeah. put them in there look like a tombstone. Like a tombstone. Oh, yeah. 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 I remember that and was so much out of them. Yeah. Oh man. I love it. <laughs> or like you take, um, like a, a lot of times people take like a hot dog and then they wrap dough around it and they oh, look yeah. like mummies. Kind of like a right, mummy. right. Put like a little eyeball something on there. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, people get really creative, and I see these things, and I'm like, oh man, I, I want to have a party just to make the treats. <laughs> yes. It's really cool looking. Yes. I mean, yeah. food. If there's food, I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, yeah. That, that, that's pretty much, you know, <laughs> that, that that'll do it for us. <laughs> food. Okay, we're good. <laughs> you know, though, what one of my most favorite. Um, Halloween treats is caramel apples. Oh, those are great. Oh, I just absolutely love caramel apples. Or nowadays they kind of um, <laughs> pump them up to like chocolate dipped apples too. <clears throat> they would dip mm. them in caramel first and then they would dip them in chocolate. Yeah. Oh, so delicious. They put some nuts so on good. it and oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, like different toppings and stuff. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah, I love delicious. it. Delicious. So what are some other things that we do for Halloween? Um, I've got on my list here, uh, we carve those jack-o'-lanterns. That's the the big pumpkin, and you put the eyes and the nose and all that, put a little a candle inside. Um, that's always a fun thing. Um yeah, usually set them out. Rides. Oh what? When you'd usually set them out on your porch. like Right, yeah. yeah. It's a nice way to light up your house like at night, you know, for the trick-or-treaters to come. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of work doing those things. I, I don't know. I don't really like it. It's too much work. <laughs> I enjoy it. We do it every single year. Oh, really? yeah. And my mm-hmm. um, eight-year-old son loves pulling guts out of the pumpkin. <laughs> you well, know, the seeds and does. membranes yeah. and all that. He loves doing all that. Like, and do you bake the seeds when you're done? I love those. Uh, sometimes, yeah. Some mm-hmm. one depends on the time, but I do love um, pumpkin seeds when they're baked yeah. and crispy. They're delicious. So, yeah, I should do that again one day. It's been a while. Um, okay, yeah. So we've got haunted hay rides, corn mazes, haunted corn mazes. Like they'll make this maze out of corn, and like you go through these turns, and something scary will jump out at you. Yeah, I haven't been to one of those in a while. Yeah, my very first haunted house um, that I went to was in New York. Um, I went to see, yeah, it was, it was kind of, I went to see Madame Tussauds uh, Wax Museum and it was one of the exhibits there. It was this haunted house. Oh, cool. And yeah, it was pretty cool, actually. It, it it was a little scary. Depends like on the part of it, and people jumped at you and all that stuff. But it was really neat. That's and cool. They have them nowadays, like these haunted houses or haunted hay rides or anything like that. In I would say every town, yeah, around Halloween, and they have them like really scary for adults, and they have some that are specifically for kids. That are not um, so scary. Have, yeah. We, yeah. Here in town, we have this trail that kind of goes around town and they have a certain part of the trail where they make it like a haunted trail during this time. Yeah. It's always neat. Yeah. There's one here that I just found out about and I want to go so badly, but nobody likes this kind of stuff with me here, but it looks really scary. It's like in the woods and yeah. And they show pictures Ooh. of it. You know, This is another thing that's really funny. Like a lot of the haunted houses now they have the haunted cam 
So there'll be like cameras that are taking pictures of people's reactions as they're getting scared by the characters. And they're so funny. Hilarious. Their reactions, oh, their yeah. faces, and they're like covering their heads. And it's so funny. Oh my God. But yeah, I totally want to do that. Yeah, you should. I think you should. Yeah, I'll go by myself because nobody likes it. Can you bribe, <laughs> bribe your husband? <laughs> no, he, he, he's already said no, no. Just like with the scary movies, love the scary movies. It's not happening. He will not watch it with me. He doesn't like scary movies. Oh, no. no. We just watched Hocus Pocus 2 yesterday. Have you watched it yet? <laughs> You know, I know everybody loves Hocus Pocus. It's not scary, but still, it's like a thing that people love. I've never seen exactly. Hocus Pocus. Okay. I think you should make that your goal this season and watch the first one and the second one. Because everybody talks Hocus about it. Even like hardcore Halloween fans, they love Hocus Pocus. So it's a I guess I need to check it out. Yeah. Yeah, it is a staple. So you kind of, I mean, as big of a fan of Halloween as you are, um, you, you kind of have to do that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just I'll have to those check things it out. that a true fan of Halloween <laughs> yeah, has to do. But do you yeah. have an all-time favorite scary movie that you watch every oh. year for Halloween? What is I it? Have so many, I have so many favorites. Well, um, one of your favorites. Oh, my God. I don't know. I, I like the, two. the classic for me. Well, you know, it's funny. Um, well, you know, I, I just went over to India recently and it's a 15 hour flight. So I was like, oh, I'm here watching movies by myself. What can I find on here? <laughs> so like the whole time I was watching scary movie after scary movie. And I watched one of my favorite classics. Um, it's it's called um, Nightmare on Elm Street. The original oh from like 1985. Yeah. Yes. And I hadn't seen it in a while and I wasn't sure because, you know, some of these things can get a little cheesy after a while and you're like, oh, why did I like that? But I still liked it. There's still, you know, for 1985, the effects were pretty good. I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I watched The Shining. Uh, it's another classic oh. movie uh, from, I think, the <gasps> early 80s or that something. That one is intense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, oh, not as intense as The Exorcist. Oh, well, yeah. Yes. Mm, yep. I love that, that one. one. I love like the, you know, any of the haunted house kind of movies or n- like not the conjuring. There's something called slasher movies. And those are the movies where there's just some crazy man running around with a knife killing people. No, I don't like those. I like something with, uh, I like something that's more like psychological or creepy, like ghosts. Yeah, um, I mean, you're right. Like the slasher movies are more of like people just being, I don't know, cut into pieces and there's lots of blood and gore and all that. Yeah. But um, more of like a, a ghost. And I always, it's you know, story. even with them, I like a good vampire or werewolf story too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I I'm mean, a big Dracula. Bram, yeah, Bram Stoker's yeah. Dracula is one of my favorite movies. I mean, it's a classic, right? And they've remade it so many times, but yeah. I feel like it's always a good story. Um, or yeah. anything about werewolves. One of the my favorite ones is The Werewolf in London. Um, okay. I always like watching that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like the ghost story. I, I am not a big fan of slasher movies, to tell the truth. I mean, it's just like yeah. blood everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, so something like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street, it's a little bit of slasher, but it's a good story and um, and there's a big creepy factor. So I like that. So, so yeah, um, pretty much. <laughs> right. I, you know, I, I keep wanting to, to tell you this story. Well, fact that I read recently is, you know, when you, we talked about like the coincidences and eerie things that happen on Halloween. You know, Harry Houdini, you know who that is, right? Yes. He was a famous magician and they mm-hmm. call him escape artist and all that. Did you know that he died on Halloween? Oh. 1926. Not. Yeah. He died on Halloween. So eerie. Huh. <laughs> eerie. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm, cool. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, 
Well, I, you know, there's so much more we could talk about with Halloween and creepy and haunted houses. Oh. Well, I would love to have a whole episode just on actual haunted houses that people go to visit and like because it has some history. I would love to talk about that, but some other time. But oh, I yeah, thought and let's just end this with um, something uh, quick here. I looked for uh, some names of places in the United States that have kind of like creepy or scary, odd sounding names. And let's see if you've heard of any of these. Well, let's start with Illinois. Yes. Illinois yes. apparently has a town called Booz, B-O-O-S, like ghost says boo, right? Booze. <laughs> Booze, Illinois. Booze. Um, there's also oh. two places in Illinois. Again, these unincorporated kind of places um, called Roaches and Roachtown. Oh, oh yeah. I don't think I want to live in Roachtown. I definitely don't want to roach like cockroach. Yeah. Don't know. No, thank not, you. not into it. No. Um, no. Alabama, where I am, we've got a place called Screamer. <laughs> Screamer, Ooh. Alabama. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then a few others. And I got to tell you, I don't know what's going on in North Carolina, but boy, I found a lot of them there. Um, there's a Bat Cave, North Carolina. Is Cape that where Bat Fear? Is? Uh, yes, probably. Yes, I don't know. There's a Cape Fear, which that was a movie too. Ooh. That's the name of a movie. Seven Devils. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Interesting. I know. Oh, there's some even crazier ones than that, but I, I'm just trying to keep it a little bit. You know, not too crazy. Um, and actually, where my mom used to live in North Carolina, the whole county, it's called Transylvania County, which any vampire fans know that that's where oh, yes. Dracula was from, Transylvania, <laughs> Romania, right? Yeah. That's right. Um, <gasps> South Carolina is getting in on the action with Spiderweb. Spiderweb, There's South a Carolina. Can you imagine you're like, hey, where are you from? Well, I'm from Spiderweb. Where are you from? I'm from, from well, Seven Devils. <laughs> for a nice segue here, how about saying, hey, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Hell. <gasps> Hell, Michigan. Ooh. Hell, uh, oh, Michigan. I've heard of that town. Hell, yeah. Michigan. Yeah. You know, I haven't, I didn't look it up, I... but I heard about this a while ago. And apparently they embrace the craziness that is their name, Hell. And there's like all kinds of you know, uh, souvenir shops and stuff that kind of embrace the idea of Definitely. their name. Yeah. Oh, of course, we've got Death Valley, California. Yeah. Well, that's pretty, yeah, famous. Yeah. Um, Frankenstein, Missouri. Another classic uh, movie, Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, then we've got Tombstone, Arizona. Oh, Yeah. Yeah. And that's a and famous we'll, town too. It is. They in the movie for that too, yeah. Right, um, right. and then to leave it on a not so speak, spooky note, Black Cat, what? Arkansas. Flat cat? Black cat, yes. Oh, black cat. <laughs> yes. You know, like it's supposed to be a Halloween thing, bad luck and all yeah. that. Black cats are great luck. Oh, <laughs> No, so anyway, uh, we covered just a little bit of Halloween stuff. Definitely would love to do the spooky thing again um, another time. Right. Um, but anyway, again, it's awesome to see you again and to yes. get to talk with you after so long. Um, again, I have to remind everybody, please check out the show notes. I'm going to try to have more explanations on some of the things we talked about that maybe you might have missed. Some cultural notes little extras that we didn't get to i'll include there too so well i think that'll until do it for next today time. yeah until next time here's to good coffee good vibes and great conversations cheers cheers <laughs>